We want to talk about where we stand with COVID-19 here in the United States, along with potential vaccine production. But first, the latest from Anjali Kamlani on the government here in the United States steps with the World Health Organization. Anjali? That's right, Adam. So as we know, yesterday, President Trump did notify the UN and Congress of the intent to withdraw from the World Health Organization. And that would pull uh, the US out of a number of things. Number one, it would be a detrimental to collaborations that, that scientists and public health experts have globally, as well as funding for the World Health Organization. Right now, the US contributes more than 400 million per year, about 15% of the WHO's budget. Um, and so what that is one aspect of it. The other is, of course, those collaborations and what it means for the ability of the world to respond to a global health crisis like the one we are currently in. Um, there are questions about when and how this would take place, whether or not Congress needs to be involved. Um, as of right now, that, notif that notification does uh, allow for a one-year period, um, and, and that includes uh, paying off any debts owed to the World Health Organization. So that's where things stand right now. Now, Adam. What about on vaccines? Where do we stand as far as companies and their human trials? So a number of things. Um, let's start off with the one that we know the most about, which is Moderna. Of course, that is a front runner. We've heard much more about it. It was the first to get to uh, human trials. Um, right now, they are uh, completing, uh, they've already completed phase one, have fully enrolled phase two, and are looking to start phase three by the end of the month. Um, right now, the phase two testing is, to, is gonna focus on two different doses um, to try and determine whether a lower dose of 50 micrograms or 100 micrograms programs are more effective, and that is with two shots. Um, the phase three is going to start with testing 100 micrograms, and that is going to be in a total of 30,000 people. And let's remember that phase three is that final phase uh, to ensure the safety and effectiveness of a vaccine. Most companies who enter that will be doing tens of thousands of people um, in that trial. Um, Novavax is another one which we know recently got a significant boost from the government uh, with 1.6 billion from Operation Warp Speed. And that is going to be used towards that phase three trial and manufacturing when it does get there with the federal government owning those doses. Currently, though, um, they did get to the phase uh, one, two trial and, and are looking at uh, results at the end of this month. Innovio is that is the, one of the other smaller uh, biotechs that has also been in this race, one of the first to get to trial as well. Uh, they announced on June 30th that they had positive results from their phase one um, and are uh, looking to continue onwards. Uh, th there has been some uh, issues with that with that company, um, a, a class action lawsuit actually in play right now because of allegations of pumping the stock and claiming that there was a vaccine developed before there actually was. So those are the smaller biotechs. And uh, of course, we know about the larger players that are in the mix, J&J, &J, Pfizer, Sanofi, and Merck. And all of those aren't necessarily as far along with the exception of Pfizer, which is in fact um, yes. looking to start phase three this month. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.